Hello, everyone, and welcome to your partner in education, Agile Rank Mate. Today, we're going to be starting off with an entirely new series titled Measure with Mensa. So, Mensa is an important examination globally, and it deals with solving uh, critical thinking and uh, lateral thinking questions. So, uh, we're going to be looking at some sample questions of Mensa and how to solve them effectively. So let's start off with our first question. Bill climbs a two mile hill at an uphill speed of two miles per hour, spends no time at the top and immediately walks down at six miles per hour. What is his average speed for the up and down trips? Now let's look at a simulation of what that might look like. So Bill climbs up two miles at a speed of two miles per hour and then climbs down at a speed of six miles per hour we need to find out his average speed. So, how do we do it? Well, we know that he took, he climbed two miles at a speed of two miles per hour, and time taken is usually the quotient of dividing distance with speed. So two over two should give you one hour. So two miles per hour, at two miles per hour, Bill climbed up the hill in 60 minutes. Now what about his climb down? Again, when we use the same formula, the distance is again two miles. However, the speed here is six miles per hour. So therefore, he completes a uh, so he completes the descent in a third of an hour. Now, since one hour is 60 minutes, a third of an hour would mean that he completed the descent in 20 minutes. So therefore, the total time that he took to climb up and down the hill is 80 minutes. And we know that the total distance which is two miles up and two miles down, would amount to a total of four miles. So, in order to find out the average speed, that's what we need to divide. We need to divide the total distance traveled over the total time taken. So, average speed is total distance upon total time, which is four miles over 80 minutes. Now, four miles are done in 80 minutes, so one mile would be done in 20 minutes because four goes into 80, 20 times. So one mile is completed in 20 minutes, so therefore if you multiply both numerator and denominator by three, you get three miles completed in one hour. So therefore the correct average speed is three miles per hour. The answer is three miles per hour. Now let's look at another question. What is the number that is two more than one-tenth of one-fifth of one-tenth of one thousand? Now at first glance this looks like a very complicated question. However, we can solve it real easily. Now, two more than means that two is added to a number. And that number has something to do with 1,000. So 1,000 is the numerator. Now, we have to multiply 1 by 10, 1 by 5, and 1 by 10. And then that product is multiplied with 1,000 to get a certain number that is added with two. Now the idea is, uh, uh, in order to solve this question, we need to start backwards. Now that, now what does that mean? That means we need to start from 1,000. So we need to find a, th a tenth of a thousand, which is a hundred. We need to find a fifth of a hundred, which is twenty. And then we need to find a tenth of twenty, which is two. So you can do it this way, or you can just 
put in all the denominators together at once because the word of in baud mass actually means multiplication. So you can multiply all these fractions of a thousand that you need to get. So one by 10 times one by five times one by 10 gives you, um, you know, it gives you 500. So a thousand over 10 times five times 10, you can cut out the zeros. So you get 10 over five, which is two. Now the original number we're looking for is two plus the uh, division of a thousand by 500. So therefore that is two. So therefore the answer is two plus two, which is equal to four. So therefore the right answer for this question is four. Now in case of uh, multiple uh, operations, we will follow the baud mass rule. Now, uh, over here, we have division and addition to be done. So we did the division first. Now, in division, um, all of these percent, all of these, you know, fractions are to be taken out of 1,000. So we combine them together to form 1 by 500 of 1,000, which is 2. And that 2, when, when added with another 2, gives you 4. So therefore, the right answer is 4. Now, let's look at a verbal problem. Pat likes books, but not magazines. She likes going to shows, but not the ballet. And she likes movies, but not pictures. Now, by the same rules, we need to find out whether she likes videos or tapes. Now, in order to do that, it's a good idea to classify her likes and dislikes. So, her likes include books, shows, movies, and her dislikes include magazines, ballet, pictures. Now, if you look at uh, the likes, you can see that Pat likes books, she likes shows, she likes movies. Now, as you can see, all of them contain at least one O in the word. There are, there are two O's in books, one O each in one O in shows as well as movies. So therefore, um, uh, when the the rule that Pat uses to like something is whether the word has an O in it. At least one O must be present in that word. So therefore, she will like the hobby or the product. So when it comes to videos and tapes, we can see that videos have the letter O in the video, the word videos has the letter O in it. So therefore, uh, according to the same rules, Pat is supposed to like videos. So the answer here is videos. Now let's look at an important question. Six smart people can read 12 books in six hours. How many books can three of these smart people read in nine hours? So in order to visualize what we're dealing with, it, here it is an illustration. So we have six people, we have 12 books, and, a t and the, the 12 books are completed by these six people in six hours. So we need to find out how many books can three, pe three of these people read in nine hours. So we need to find the number of books read if the number of people and time are given. So that means we need to construct the following. Six people in six hours complete 12 books. Now, we would need to uh, find out how, how much a person reads in an hour. So when we divide, um, the number of people, so you get one person in six hours reads 12 by 6, which is two books. So if you are looking at one person, one person would deal with two books during the six hours time period. Now, if we were to um, find out how much that person reads in an hour, 
So one person in one hour would read two over six, which is one by three books. So um, one person would read a third of a book in one hour. Now this is the rate of the work done here. Now we can use that rate in order to find out how many books can be read by three people in nine hours. Now, three people in nine hours. Now we know that the rate of uh, book reading is one by three books by one person per hour. So we're gonna multiply that rate with the number of people and the number of hours. So three cancels out with three. What we have is nine. So the right answer is nine books per nine books are read by three smart people in nine hours. So therefore, that's the answer that we get. Now let's look at the final question for the day. Now uh, here we have some objects from which numbers are taken and we need to find out a particular value. Begin with the number of legs on a spider. Add the number of stars in the US flag in 1935. Divide by two and add the number of leaves that enables you to distinguish poison ivy. We need to find out what is the resultant number that we get. So the number of legs on a spider is eight. And that's pretty obvious. But uh, what about the other two? Now for poison ivy, uh, there is a popular saying that goes leaflet three, let it be. Which means that uh, if you find a plant with three leaflets on a stalk, then it's best to avoid it because it's most likely poison ivy. So poison ivy has three leaflets on a stalk. So that's how, so that's the number that we're looking for. So eight legs, three leaves. Now what's about the stars in the US flag of 1935? Now in 1935, we had the 48 star flag that flew from 1917 to 1959. So this flag was present till 1959 when they changed it to 59 stars and then, and then Hawaii joined the union and then they eventually made it to, I mean, it was made, changed to 49 stars and then in 1960 Hawaii joined and then therefore they had to make, make it to 60 stars. So the number of stars in the US uh, represents the number of uh, states that it has. So in 1935, they had the 48 star flag. So therefore the number of stars is 48. Now, we need to first add the number of legs on a spider and the number of uh, stars in the US flag. So that is eight plus 48, which gives you 56. Next, we need to divide that sum by two. So 56 over two gives you 28. You can do that division over here. 2 goes into 5 2 times, but actually you get 4, so therefore 1 is the remainder. So 6 comes down at 16, and uh, 2 goes into 16 8 times, so therefore the quotient is 28. So we have a quotient which is 28. We need to add the quotient with the number of leaves used to distinguish poison ivy, which is three. So therefore 28 plus three is 31. So our final answer is the number 31. So when you add the number of legs on a spider to the number of stars on the US flag in 1935, you get 56. When you divide that by two, you get 28. And when you add the number of leaves that enable you to dis distinguish poison ivy into 28, you get 31. So therefore 31 is our final answer. Now that concludes this episode of Measure with Mensa. We hope you found this episode interesting. For more of our useful and interesting content, don't forget to subscribe to Agile Rank Mate, your partner in education. If you want to get the latest updates from our channel, then please don't forget to hit the bell icon present below the video. So until the next episode, take care, stay alert, bye-bye for now.